know, I think it's fair to say that everybody knew from the moment that Meghan Markle did that very first engagement interview with the BBC, remember the one with the sort of olive dress, that she basically came out and said it was all orchestrated and scripted. And then, of course, the BBC hit back, basically saying, not true, we've got the tape, we'll prove it to you. That shut Meghan up for 10 minutes, didn't it? But, of course, many people realised, of course, that she was never going to be this church mouse of a person not wanting to speak out. We saw it so many times, you know, place at the table, the washing up story, you know, it was all about me woefully, all that sort of stuff. And it was never really going to fit into the remit of the British monarchy. As we've seen, you know, royal ladies really, in many respects, have to carve their own path. And each generation, I think, breaks through a different barrier. What we've seen, for instance, with the Princess of Wales is unprecedented access, really, to what she's gone through on a personal battle with her own health. If you think about the, her, our late and wonderful monarch, Her Majesty the Queen, we never heard anything about health until the last few years. Even, of course, her father, you know, that was only really reported a couple of days before as to how gravely ill he was. This is how much it's changed, but not fast enough for Meghan. And recently she had a few thoughts to a very close uh, source all about um, Princess Catherine and her return. Let me explain. And on this beautiful day, or good evening, if you're going to bed and don't welcome one and all, how are you? Are you waving? I don't see you. Come on, get yes, make an effort. I know it's boiling out here. You can see that, can't you? Drifting, obviously. And also, thank you for your lovely comments about a classic comedy show, To the Manor Born. Yeah, I mean, you see, I think um, the royals obviously have got a good taste, haven't they? Uh, the Queen Mother loved Are You Being Served. Prince Philip apparently loved On the Vossus. And you just kind of think, what did he find funny about that? It is funny, but you think, how would he know about that? And so, you know, it, you never know what's going to tickle the funny bone, do you? But thank you. I'm so glad that you enjoyed um, the To the Manor Born and the Royal Connected story because meeting the actor Peter Bowles was just absolutely delightful. A lovely, lovely man, sadly missed, of course. And Penelope Keith still very much with us and still very much in character, dare I say. You feel you ought to curtsy when you meet her, you know what I mean? Lovely lady, though. <laughs> lovely, lovely lady. Back as ever to your Royal Story of the Day. Yeah, this is interesting because as we've all just celebrated the return of, of course, uh, the Princess of Wales, Princess Catherine, uh, and everybody, you know, basically said she looked great. I thought, as I've said to you before, looked absolutely terrific. Now, what's been revealed to me from a working source alongside Meghan is no negativity on this one, in fact, but this is apparently, this particular image, in fact, is the reason why Meghan felt that, you know, she couldn't really sustain her life within the monarchy. If you remember, of course, when they all got together for the Fab Four, do you remember that chat? And they were all sat there on the podium. And Meghan, as ever, as we now can see, was hogging uh, the microphone, you know, and Catherine very kindly, very patiently waiting, of course, uh, to have her say. Not because she's shy or meek or anything like that, just simply being polite. That's not something, really, that Meghan could be accused of. She wants her voice to be heard and out there. And according to this source, that's part of the reason why she had no and still has no interest inside the British monarchy. She claims that you are, as ever we have to say allegedly, voiceless. You know, you don't have an opinion, you basically go along with what's presented to you. Other royal ladies may basically say differently. If you think of the Duchess of Edinburgh, very much carving her own path, who dare cross the Princess Royal and Royal Highness Princess Anne? And then, of course, we've got Catherine, started off very shy. But as I said, when I first went to her very first speech, you know, yeah, she was nervous, but look at what she's like now, leading from the front. This is just a personal setback. But apparently that was too much of a setback for, of course, the former royal known as the Duchess of Sussex to try and make this particular thing move forward. And when you look at it now, you can see that the pattern was there and really it was all laid out. So in some respects, a lot of people are saying, well, she would have never made it, but it was already written down in front of you. She was saying, I want to have a voice. Obviously, she clashed at various points with our late and wonderful monarch and indeed uh, King Charles. But seriously, Harry must have said, according to that source, that she would have this ability to change things. When she found she didn't and couldn't, she claimed that she didn't want a life like the Princess of Wales, seemingly voiceless, with nothing to say, and more importantly, clearly, nothing to add. Now, I don't know about you, but I think she's really got this one terrifically wrong. New Sean in the very heart of London.